says, I've heard that you help people with same-sex attraction. I have this attraction, but I don't want it. What can I do? Yeah, you know, and this is a debate. I get in conversations with psychologists, and it's almost like you have this, like, two headed psychology monster. Some psychologists are like, people with same-sex attraction should do diversion therapy and heal, aversion therapy and heal themselves. Other therapists are saying, uh, this isn't something that is an addiction or a problem that someone has to heal from. It's just something that exists within them. And, and so here's what I'm going to say. Whether someone's born with this, whether their brain starts triggering because of abuse, it, this is what they're experiencing. This isn't a choice that someone makes to be same-sex attracted. I had one client say, why would I ever choose this? Why would I ever choose to be discriminated against and for my religious system to not look at me the same way they look at uh, heterosexuals? Why would I ever choose this for myself? And rarely have I talked to someone who hasn't gone through their stage with same-sex attraction where they're not saying to themselves, I wish this would just go away. I wish I didn't have to deal with this. Uh, because, this uh, because the conversation that's happening in society is that this is a broken part of someone that should be fixed. I just don't believe that. I don't believe that someone with same-sex attraction is broken. Um, as one person put it, God doesn't make mistakes. And I never remember not being attracted to the same sex. So why would God do this to me? And I say, you know, I don't know what your belief system is. I don't know what it isn't. But that's my b belief as well, is that you're not a mistake you don't have something that you have to crush, kill, and destroy. Now, I don't know what your value system is, uh, but different people with different value systems with same-sex attraction do make those decisions to still stay engaged in their own value system, and that's a personal choice. And so when I'm working with my clients, one of the first things I do with them is really do a lot of work on the internalized shame that comes a lot of the time because what society has said and what 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 media has often said is I work hard to help them get to a point where they can literally say to themselves I am not a mistake I'm not broken this is a part of who I am and it's a beautiful part of who I am now some people choose to go and and find a partner with with same sex attraction as well and some people choose not to that's not my choice uh, that's not my place where I can put what someone's value system should be because then that would be me counter transferring my own opinions onto someone else. What I tell people is to s search deep within you to find the ability to truly love yourself for who you are because you are not broken. You are not a mistake. And this is really hard sometimes with the parents because parents will be like, well, well, I want them to change because I want them to be happy and I want them to marry someone and have babies and all this stuff. And I say, you can't choose that for them. <laughs> you can't force them to feel a different way. And what a lot of the research has shown in diversion therapy, Robert Spitzer was a guy who really, um, he, he really pioneered this fact that, oh, you can change someone. Well, he came out a few years ago and apologized to the LGBT community for what he said was inaccurate research and frankly dishonest information. So all these therapists were basing a lot of their programs off of Spitzer's research and then he came out and said, you know what, you know, I'm sorry. And the fact is, is the work that someone with same-sex attraction really should do is really that self-autonomy work. Get in touch with your own value system. Really learn to love yourself. Really learn to know that you aren't a mistake and you're not broken, even if society is going to sit there and rip you for being someone who you couldn't even choose to be. And I, I watch individuals with same-sex attraction really learn to love themselves and become confident in themselves and the choices you make from that point forward really need to be based upon what you choose, not what someone else chooses for you. And I've seen people go all sorts of different directions. And so uh, sometimes that's not what people want to hear. They're like, I just want this taken away. 
And I'm here to say that you're not a mistake in the first place. You never were, no matter what society has said, no matter what other people have said. And I'm going to go a little bit spiritual here, so forgive me if you're not Christian. Um, other theological texts could probably confirm this as well. But last time I checked in the New Testament, Christ loved everyone. He did not condemn people. He did not cast stones. He unconditionally loved. And so that's what we need to learn to do within ourselves is truly unconditionally love ourselves no matter who we are. Okay? And being same-sex attraction, you know, uh, being same-sex attracted is not the same as being a pornography addict. One makes choices to become addicted to pornography, even if they don't realize that's happening as a kid. You know, some kids start looking at porn and they're like, oh my gosh. And the next thing they know, they're addicted and they're like, what happened? You didn't choose to be same sex attracted. Okay. That was something that housed itself within you for whatever scientific reason you want to say by birth, by nature, by nurture. I don't know. I. Uh, I'll lose that debate on either side if I try to argue with someone. But it is what it is, and you're a wonderful person.